We're going to get right to questions. We're going to start with Joe Bettner with the Norman transcript, and then we'll go to Jason Curzon. Yes. Uh, TJ, you had some catches there that were you made contact and were still able to go after, you know, pick up a few more yards. I'm curious how much of the emphasis that's been for you this offseason to maybe be more involved in kind of the in the pass game. Um, you know, definitely has been a big emphasis. You know, DeMarco has always uh since he since he became a coach here, he's always taught us about uh breaking tackles and being able to finish our runs and um, you know, make uh big uh, little plays and the bigger plays and uh, this off season, you know, working on lower body strength and things like that have definitely uh, allowed us to be able to do so. Thank you. Jason Kersey with The Athletic and then Ryan Aber. Hey, TJ. Um, you know, just as a kid that, that came in as highly recruited as you were, have the last few years been tough on you? Have you gotten frustrated at times? And if so, how did you kind of fight through that and stay positive? Um, I would definitely say I've been through every emotion in college football, um, you know, ups and downs, you know, being from being injured to uh, having good camps and really not uh, letting, having the season turn out my way. But, um, you know, I always keep faith. I got a very strong support system at home, my family, um, God, I, you know, I've, I've always leaned on them when, it, when I've been through hard times and uh, they kept me going and, you know, the, the game is going to test you. And uh, if you really love the game, like like we all say we do, you're going to go through ups and downs. And um, just keep – main thing for me is just been keep fighting and always seeing the uh, road at the end of the tunnel. Thanks, TJ. Yes, sir. Ryan Aber with the Oklahoman and then Eric Bailey. Yeah, TJ, um, how close do you, do you think the running game is to, to getting going again? And, and what are some of the things, especially last week when, when you were in there, that you noticed that uh, we're, we're keeping it from being uh, as successful as y'all have been? Um, you know, we very close. You know, um, main focus now is just playing 11-man football. And uh, we think uh, by doing so, you know, runs will start to pop and uh, we got to finish that practice and everything is going to work itself out. Appreciate it. Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World and then Bob Prisbillo. Hey, TJ, just how much have you had to really establish yourself in, into a leader into that running back's room during the past 12 months, beginning with the Peach Bowl and then watching players in the room opt out, transfer, and not unavailable due to suspension? Yeah, you know, definitely um, through these last four months, I've, I've seen myself turn it, I've seen myself take, on, take under that role, you know, being the oldest guy out there right now and, uh, you know, trying to lead by example and just come out, come out there every day on the practice field and continue to work hard. And, you know, keep them young guys going. And um, with Coach Murray, uh, is, is he's definitely made it an easy transition. Thank you, TJ. Okay, Bob Prisbilla with Sooner Scoop. And then let's go to John Hoover after that. DJ, your first running back we've talked to in uh, 2020. So what's DeMarco Murray been like? What are, what are some of the things that he's really brought to the table for you guys? Uh, Juice, he's brought everything to the table, honestly. Um, it's been a blessing to have him as our coach. Um, you know, every day we come in, we learn something new. We learn, you know, about the game of football outside of just the running back area, but defenses in different positions. And um, he's opened our eyes up to a lot of a lot of different aspects of the game of football that, you know, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to be a part of so far. John Hoover with SI Sooners and then Caleb McCurry. Hey, TJ, um, a follow up question to the, the guys who have left and your emergence as a leader. You mentioned DeMarco Murray, uh, his role in that. Can you kind of expound on his role in helping you become that leader? What some of the things he's done to maybe encourage you to take it more on your shoulders? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say mostly just pushing me harder to to new levels and new um, and new heights that I you know that he sees in me and just allowing me to you know voice voice uh, to the say my voice to the younger guys and be able to talk to them and push them and you know just having De having Demarco Murray as your coach is enough. Like we come every day. I kind of I. I want to. I want to do the things that he's done. So you know, you want to listen and you want to learn. And you want to soak up all the knowledge you can get, and you know, and I try to. I try my best to uh, spread that to the younger guys. And then a quick follow up, if you don't mind. The coach Riley said a, a minute ago uh, that losses 
suck. He used that word and he said, it's hard and, and it hurts like hell. And he said that, uh, you know, the, the, it's looks forward to the challenge of getting over the next one, getting to the next one. Can you describe that from a player's perspective, what he's talking about, the, the pain that you guys go through losing games like that? You know, definitely because we, we work so hard every day and you know, we all, we see, we always see a big, a big end goal for us. Cause you know, this is Oklahoma football. We expect, we, we have high expectations for ourselves. So, you know, um, you know, under the circumstances, uh, circumstances, you know, we try, we try our best to to go go through, understand what went wrong, and continue to move forward. And understanding it's a long season ahead, and you know, we continue to fight, continue to push. We we know what the end result can be. I appreciate it, TJ. Thank you, sir. Caleb McCurry with OU Daily, and then Dean Blevins. DJ, uh, what have your conversations been like with Ramondre and how hard do you think he's taking, you know, not being able to play these games this season? You know, uh, me and Ramondre have became very close. Um, and uh, we, he, he, he does his best to stay motivated. He comes, he comes out to practice every day working hard. And he understands that his time will come and he's being patient, keeping faith. And um, I can't wait for him to come back. He'll be ready. Thanks. Dean Blevins with KWTV and then Kerry Murdoch. Yeah, TJ, you guys ran hard and ran well the other night, you and Seth. Um, but there were no runs over 15 yards. In fact, I don't believe there have been any through two games. What's it going to take to finish uh, runs off? You know, there's a big difference in a 14-yard in a run and one where you're able to take it to the house. Can you talk about what it – what needs to happen for you to be able to, to bust big ones? You know, definitely um, we just got to continue to finish our runs and uh, trust, trust, trust our eyes and trust what we see. And, um, you know, it starts on the practice field. And uh, I definitely believe those big runs that you're talking about are on the way. Let's go to, I can't remember who I said next. Who did I say next? You said me, Mike. Gary. Gary. Hey, TJ. Um, you know, I, I know you guys would rather struggle uh, and, and pull out a victory and kind of have something, you know, a lesson to learn. But, you know, coming off a loss like that, does it make guys on both sides of the ball kind of take stock like, oh, okay, we lost, you know, we lost CD and we lost Jalen. We lost all these guys. You know, we lost Kenneth Murray. D does it make everybody kind of look at themselves and say, you know what? it's time for, for me to step up to be that next great player at Oklahoma if, if we're going to live up to the mm -hmm. standard that, that we expect. Uh, I would say we definitely all understand the standard that it is here, and we've all been here with guys that yeah. were great and, you know, took and put the team on their backs. And um, I think everybody's going to fall into their, to their own role and understanding that everybody has to play their role. And um, – over throughout the season, people will continue to fit into their roles, and uh, people will blossom. And uh, I think it'll 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 come out perfect. But when you have a loss like that, is it is it almost I don't know more of a stark reality? Like, okay, we're not we're not living up to that standard. We're not you know doing what we should be doing as as players at Oklahoma. Like I we're think not, as, we're not being the playmakers that we need to be. I think as a whole, um, we, we're mostly focused on consistency. Um, we know. Even though we we lost, we did we did uh, you know put some good film out there, and I think the main thing right now is just being consistent, and you know um, that's what we really focused on right now. Thanks, DJ. Time for just a couple more. Keegan Renault with Sooners Wire, and then Brandon Drum. TJ, I know the the running game may not be where you guys want it yet, but the one thing that you know you and Seth McGowan have done really well is in pass protection something that DeMarco's brought to the table or is that something that you guys have had you know been good in uh, before he got here? Um, definitely because Murray has really honed in on pass protection and how important it is to protect Spencer and you know just different fundamentals uh, in Coach B and I, I think uh, Coach Murray plays a big part in our success in the pass pro area right now. And Brandon Drum, OU Insider. Hey, TJ, uh, you, you've had a really good offseason led to you starting this past weekend. Uh, can you kind of walk everybody through? Uh, you, you've talked about the ups and the downs throughout this whole time that you've been at OU, but 
can you talk about this off season, sticking around Oklahoma City, working out with a group of guys, and really trying to focus in on everything, and what that has helped you to stay, how that has helped you take uh, a next step to you in your career, and then uh, can you kind of talk about uh, your reaction? We talked, you talked about Demarco and what he's brought to the coach, but when you found out he was going to be the coach, just yeah. your instant reaction. Yeah, um, I'll start with the reaction. Uh, you know, my mom had sent me a a, a, a tweet, and I, I kind of didn't even believe it. And I was just, I was just like, wow, it's time to get to work. We got a legend coming in here. We're gonna be coached by a legend. And I think all of all of us guys, we were all excited. And we couldn't uh, we couldn't wait to uh, get to work with him. And then um, when it comes to this off season, you know, just training, just trying to build my body up, understanding my my cons and my pros, and trying to really hone in on those, and uh, just continue to get faster, continue to get stronger, and understand that the talent is there. I just need to, I just needed to, um, you know, uh, believe in myself and bet on myself. 